everybody, I'm Asian Funk. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I am joined by writer, photographer, painter, and the artist for the 2020 Marvel Masterpiece Trading Cards, David Palumbo. Thank you so much for being here. Super excited. Hi, good to be here. <laughs> cool. And it, I, you mentioned earlier, this is one of the first, I guess, interviews you've done for, for the cards. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Um... There's, I know there's like some other stuff kind of lined up, but uh, but yeah, I think this is this is the first like official sitting down and actually getting to talk publicly about any of this. So cool, this, cool, and yeah, congratulations by the way. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Uh, the, and from what they've revealed, uh, they look incredible. How excited or relieved were you to finally be able to publicly announce that you were the artist? Uh, <laughs> it's. It's funny, like, I had been waiting for so long to be able to talk about it, and I'm really excited to be able to talk about it now. Uh, but it, it almost kind of got to the point that when I got the heads up that the announcement was coming out, I was just like, oh, yeah, like, like so much, like, I finished working on these uh, a couple months ago, and then I was like, you know, maybe they'll announce it now, maybe they'll announce it next week, and then I, I guess just you know, at a certain point, the the email came in and I was just like, oh, right, I'm super excited about that. And and weirdly, like, for having so much time to be ready for it, I was, like, not ready at all and had to <laughs> really, like, sit down and figure a lot of things out about, like, how am I going to be, like, you know, announcing it and sharing things. And there's a lot about that that I still don't know. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I but it's It's been exciting. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, I really loved what you wrote um, in your Instagram announcement post. You said, uh, I made a Marvel Masterpieces set, y'all. After two years at work on 135 <laughs> paintings, I can finally let the cat beans spill out of the bag. I just want to say it's an honor and a proud moment, and I'm so excited to be able to share these with you. How many times did you rework that caption, or did you just know what you wanted to say like off the bat? I think it was... so. Originally, I had, and I don't know why I had this idea. I thought that this was going to get announced when it was still like not even done uh, being painted yet back in like January or February. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think I had been like occasionally like thinking about what to say and then not being able to say it and then like something else would pop into my mind and so again like by the time that the announcement did come out i was just like oh uh and i think it was kind of just like the first thing i wrote <laughs> you know i was just like uh i didn't, I didn't really I, I i thought i was gonna have something more prepared and then it was just mm -hmm. kind of i had a general idea that the announcement was coming but i didn't know exactly when and then when they put the word out I was actually like responding to other people privately for the most part. And mm -hmm. I didn't even get to post anything until the day afterwards. Like oh, by the time that I wanted to post something on that day, I was like, I'm not even going to be able to like interact with or, or, or follow my own post because I've just got like a bunch of emails to answer and a bunch of other things going on. So yeah, again, thoroughly unprepared for something that I had ample time to be prepared for is basically the, Sure, the theme sure. There. I mean, you grew up in a family full of artists. You know, your brother Anthony, uh, your your mm -hmm. mother and your stepdad Julie Bell and Boris Leo. Like they they were involved in the '96 Marvel masterpieces. How did they react when they found out the news? I think it was harder for my mom to not be able to talk about it than it was for me. <laughs> like she was she was like super excited and. Uh, yeah, I, I know that like there were a number of specific times where she was in a conversation with someone or somebody like mm -hmm. mentioned a thing to her and she would tell me afterwards like I really wanted to tell him so uh so yeah definitely like they they were really I mean yeah it's it was it was a good feelings all around I think yeah, I, I'm sure it was tough to be like sworn to secrecy and not, you know, you have to like constantly be cautious, uh, co conscious of what you're saying. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, Especially, yeah, like going to um, workshops and conventions and things, everybody's uh -huh. always like talking about what they're, 
what they're working on lately, right, and I'm right. always just like, I, You're like, uh, nothing. I got a thing. <laughs> I'll show you guys. I'll tell you in two in, years. At some point in the future. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure that was, yeah, I can't even imagine. Did you go to your mom and Boris for advice, or did they give you any advice once they found out? I don't know that that I went to them for like specific advice, but I definitely like I went back looking at their their set, which I was amazed that I didn't actually have a uh, oh. set of their cards. Mm -hmm. Which like first thing I did, I went back to you know all my old binders of like my '92 Just Go cards yeah. and my Jim Lee yeah. X Men and all that stuff, and I'm like pulling out all because you know, I was all into that stuff in the 90s. And, um, and I still have all of it. And I'm looking through and I'm like, I, I don't know why I can't find that one. And I asked my mom about it. And she's like, Yeah, they only ever sent us like one set. And so it's like, Oh, I'll just I'll get one on eBay then. And I went and looked and <laughs> found it. I didn't I never knew that it was like such a rare and expensive one. And so, really? uh, so she actually lent me hers. And, uh, and so yeah, I was like, you know looking through it with her and, and asking her questions and stuff and uh, yeah awesome. they, they were like really really helpful um, mm -hmm. like I don't remember any like specific thing that came up but I just remember like having just just being able to kind of ask them questions if anything did pop up into my mind like doing multiple versions of the same character or something like that and, mm -hmm. and just kind of like get their thoughts. On the Upper Deck website they've revealed uh, a few of the cards, uh, like Daredevil, Wolverine, Juggernaut, and you've revealed a few on your Instagram, uh, like She-Hulk, Cable, and Ultron. Is there any particular reason why you chose Cable as the character to uh, go with your announcement post? Yeah, so I, I'm um, kind of following Upper Deck's lead on what I'm able to show, and there were a number of pieces that were in their, like, uh, I guess their press release that okay. went out. Uh, and so from those, yeah, like, why did I pick Cable? I think that that one, I hey, mean, it's it definitely really like awesome. there, yeah, yeah, there are some that, that I really felt particularly happy how they came out or that mm. they would be like a real good kind of like headline piece. Yeah. Um, and yeah, of, of the group, I mean, I think that the ones that they put in like the, the Ultron is another one that. I'm really like was really happy with Iron Man was another one that uh, mm -hmm. that I was really happy with and uh, yeah like Iron Man and Daredevil I haven't shown those on any of my personal uh, social media yet but um, but yeah it, it's honestly like what is public right now is still such a small portion of the whole thing and when I think about like the whole Thing. it's so many it's 135 pieces and like I don't know what like it's it's there's there's kind of short list I guess of favorites but uh mm -hmm. it's not like there's one piece that I would think like this is this is the cover piece for me because it changes like you know I'll feel like oh yeah that's my favorite and then I'll look at another one I'll be like oh wait maybe this one you know so right, right. yeah I think of the ones that they the ones they put out that one just kind of felt like uh felt like a good lead in i guess mm -hmm. well yeah it's like how do you choose one of your children right like i'm sure they're all your your babies and of course it's like depending on your mood sometimes like oh i really you know like this one i'm really feeling this way yeah. this one's gonna be um what i'm into right now uh can you describe sort of the the process of how they chose the characters for the cards like was it that marvel just gave you a list and then you went ahead and painted them? Or was it like a collaborative process where it's like, we're thinking about these characters? Do you have any preferences? Can you maybe talk a little bit about how they selected? It was, yeah, it was a little bit of both. And I have to say, um, my understanding of, of what went on on the Marvel side is very foggy because mm. uh, everything that, that involved me directly was through Upper Deck and they were kind of a liaison and so okay. oftentimes, like, so with, with choosing the characters, um, I was asked to basically send them a list, like, who do you want to, who do you want to do, mm. you know? And so I wrote up a big list of all the characters that I was most interested in. And um, most of whom I think ended up 
uh, being on the final list. And, uh, and then, and then a list came back to me and they were like, this is what we want to go with, which ended up being close to the final list. There were a couple of changes that happened along the way. Yeah. And, and that was all back like fairly early on. So it, it kind of came in stages. I got the, the base, like the 90 character base list. And then I didn't get the the lists for the chase cards until actually probably a good ways in. It might have been like a year in. Uh, oh wow! Okay. But at that point, I mean, it was like working on those first ninety. It's like, okay, this is going to take me a while. So, we'll, no rush on that on those others, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, by the time by the time the second lists came, um, you know, at, at that point, I really kind of felt like there was a, a real kind of like flow to, you know, the process and everything and the communication was going really smooth. So it was easy to just kind of like integrate that into the whole thing. Was there a point in the two years that you were painting these, these cards that, you know, you, I, I guess like, how did you stay motivated and like, you know, uh, on track with deadlines, full steam the whole time? I'm sure you, at some point you hit, you know, kind of like a, a fatigue not really it was it was um it was really like a ramping up that lasted for two years and uh the 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 beginning of it like when they first contacted me i feel like there was a, a gap of time where nothing happened at all because there was just kind of like contracts going back and forth and getting the character list together and all that and over the next few months after that I kind of was able to slowly start getting into painting them but I was also working on projects for other clients during that time and okay. you know I had commitments to other things and I had long-term clients who I still wanted to to stay working with if I was able to manage the time but just in the course of doing those I really got to learn how to how to kind of like budget the time Mm -hmm. so that everything doesn't end up because like that first one of those that I did I think I was like I've got a year to do this book yeah you know and then it gets to be like I've got three months to do this book like what <laughs> you know I I should have been pacing myself a little better so with this I, I really knew uh not to let everything pile up to the end really the last few months was was just really like you know full throttle I had so much prep work done that I was able like I had um kind of three rolling stages of of working on a painting where I was doing rough compositions I was doing sketches and then I was doing the finished pieces and the idea I wanted to be able to send a whole bunch of roughs to my art director mm -hmm. and she would give me feedback on those and then I could work up sketches and send in batches of sketches. And then once the sketches were approved, I could be working on the finals. And I wanted to be doing all three of those things at the same time with different cards. So that if there was ever like a pause, they were actually always really fast with feedback, but but if ever like somebody was on vacation or yeah. some, there was a problem with something and I needed to go back and redo it, it didn't stop everything. It was just like, okay, I'll go back and redo that. But meanwhile, I can keep going on my other stuff, which meant by the time I got to the, those last few months and I still had you know whatever it was like 40 or 50 paintings that hadn't been finished yet but I had like all of my you know like my sketches were underway like I already knew like I, I, I had shot reference of models for like dozens of pieces in advance which I never am able to do because every other job I work on it's just like one thing at a time or maybe two or three so it was cool to be able to plan like bring a model in and be like, all right, we're going to shoot for like 10 different things. And I'm not even going to get to paint one of, you know, this one until next year, but, mm -hmm. but I'm planning everything like really, really early and then putting it together, like as I'm able going forward. So yeah. And in the end, um, obviously it seems like time always manages to like run out. <laughs> like, yeah, of course. Uh, you, you you could always use an extra week or whatever you know but um absolutely but in the end like it, it really uh it, it all came together and you know luckily like with all of the advanced prep and everything that i'd done when uh the whole pandemic thing you know kind of threw us all a curveball and i couldn't bring models into the studio because oh, yeah, yeah that would be a bad idea 
Right. Uh, luckily, like I had already shot all the reference that I needed and I'd already like, you know, basically like all of the steps one, two and three were done. And it was just kind of like, you know, I can I can lock myself at home and work on these by myself with with all the prep that I've already done. Yeah. So, yeah, it was kind of felt like it, it really came together perfectly. Yeah, I was going to say uh, at some point, I'm sure, you know, <laughs> in your photography, the models were probably wearing, you know, like masks. Um, so, uh, you, Which you wouldn't might... be a problem for half these characters. Right, but... well, exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, can, you mentioned that Marvel had approached you for the cards. Did you originally show interest in that? And, you know, were, were you like maybe campaigning for that? Or did they just select you because they felt that uh, your work with the with magic cards um would be a good fit or like a natural transition to the marvel masterpieces yeah i i i um again that was something that kind of i wasn't in the room for and uh it, when when they i was actually approached by upper deck and um oh, okay when i got that email it was kind of like you have to sign some documents before we can tell you what we want to work on you with kind oh, of wow. a thing you know uh and and so when we finally got to like they i we, i think we got on the phone after i signed all my ndas and i was really like i i i don't understand like how my name ended up on whatever list of considerations they had just because superheroes is oh. is not something that i have a background in and yeah like i I was super excited about it, but um, no, I hadn't been like thinking that I was uh, an option for or in the running for or anything like that. Um, it just was was kind of like an out of the blue type of thing, and and yeah, it was like an automatic like yes. What are the details? <laughs> what do you need it? Right, I'm right. In. <laughs> you know, so uh, yeah, I think that uh, they did mention when we were talking, I, I remember them mentioning like some of the Dark Horse covers I've done. Like uh, I mm -hmm. did a lot of mm -hmm. covers for Alien and yeah, yeah. yeah, Magic Cards and that kind of thing. And, and it is interestingly, like even though I never really um, did much in the way of like superhero stuff, I could see in retrospect, like a lot of the pieces were there it's just that it was always directed towards different subject matter but like yeah the yeah. magic cards like working at card size and and that kind of thing and uh i didn't <laughs> i had done a couple of covers for marvel many years ago for uh, mm. a title that was like very uh short-lived i think and i only ever did like two covers for him and i've, okay. I've just like, never had a relationship with marvel since then and it was something that I always like wanted to do. It was why one of the things that really got me into doing illustration in the first place. And then at a certain point, I was just like, oh wait, I guess I don't really do superhero stuff. Like I do like horror stuff and I do, you know, like gritty fantasy and that kind mm -hmm. of thing. And so, um, yeah, for it, to, for it to come in kind of out of left field like that, uh, really, oh wow. I kind of just didn't think that this was my path. Yeah, and now well, I'm getting an opportunity to actually, you know, do something pretty pretty cool here. Turns out I'm actually still super excited about this. Yeah, stuff. yeah. Well, I was actually really surprised too by just how little um, Marvel related um, work you've done. You've done a lot of stuff, but I was very surprised by how little that was related to superheroes. And yeah, and I I was to be honest, like. Um, I wasn't sure like what the response was going to be from people when it was made, you know, like when, when they named me as the artist for the set, just because I, I assume everybody's going to be like, who, you know, and um, I've been happy to see, <laughs> <laughs> no. And that's like, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's just not where my work tends to show up. And so, uh, yeah, I've been, I've been happy to see like, uh, the responses from people just kind of you know reading and you know good and bad and it's interesting to see like the the different reactions that people have and so mm -hmm. yeah it, it is a little bit like um one of the most intimidating things about it i think was just knowing that i'm a pretty much outsider for uh for this 
particular area so yeah no i i think i think it's great actually you know to to sort of inject new uh new styles new perspective um to you know the marvel universe especially in the trading cards so how would you describe your art style because you mentioned that you you know you did a lot of fantasy a lot of horror a lot of non-superhero so did you <laughs> did you feel like your your style was a natural transition to superheroes or did you feel like you had to tweak your style a little bit um, to be a little more comic booky. Yeah, um, I think that I don't think that I changed that much about what I do, with the possible exception that I think that my pieces that I did for the set are more colorful than what I had been doing. Mm. Um, a lot of my work tended to be very kind of muted, and um, I wouldn't say monochromatic exactly, but very like limited in, in color. And the colors themselves tended to be kind of like low key. And that to me felt like maybe not quite the thing for this. And so I wanted to push being a little more colorful than I usually am, which turned out to be really fun. And it's obviously like doing this many pieces, I think uh, has changed some of my thoughts on how I want to do all my work. But huh. I mean, for the most part, I kind of felt like they want me to do this, so I'm gonna do it the way that I do everything else. And, you know, there is some range to the type of work I do. Like I, I do some work for uh, more like galleries and, and that kind yep. of thing, which is mm -hmm. kind of different from my illustration. Uh, I don't think it looks like a different person, but it's it's done in a with a different sensibility. But um but the 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 bulk of it, I was just kind of like, yeah, I'm just gonna try to be me with this and do it the way that I think it would look cool and and you know the way that I want to see the character, the thing that I think would be exciting to paint. And um, I think also I noticed at a certain point, like I was I was needing to push myself a little more to do more of like action poses and and not so mm. much of a like I, I I do a lot of kind of like hero poses where the character is kind of like standing in a, in a strong pose or like looking really cool, ready for battle, but not necessarily in battle. And so I wanted to uh, push myself to, to not do too much of that and kind of mix the two a little bit. And so that was maybe like another way. And I don't feel like any of it is necessarily like changing what I, what I would do so much as understanding what this is and using that to challenge myself and um i'm sure it's changing the way i'm going to do everything else i do going forward from here because you know i learned a lot in doing a project like this it's it's definitely uh i feel a, a different artist coming out of it than i was going in for sure i'm i'm glad for a lot of experiences i've had on previous jobs prior that when i came into this one you know, I, I'm I'm glad that I went through that thing with that one client before. I'm glad that I figured out how to work on series. Is, you know, I'm I'm glad that I figured out like how to tell a story in a in a really tiny image with having been working on magic for so long. Like there were a lot of things that really kind of left me feeling like pretty prepared going into this. So the, I think like the biggest difference at the end was just understanding how, like I, I really appreciate uh, when I feel like a client trusts me and that was very much the case here. Like I felt this, this was, I, I, that was the one worry that I had actually, cause I've never worked for uh, Upper Deck or Marvel on something like big, like scale like this, like the, the, jobs that I'd done for either of them were very far in the past and not at all similar. It was, it was like one of the most enjoyable uh, working experiences I've ever had. Like they were great. And, and it really made me realize how, how much I will value other experiences like that and working with clients who uh, really like clearly want to see you do the thing that you do and think in the way that you think instead of um, really kind of like getting super myopic about like little details that ultimately will make a piece better fit their product that's important and everything but sometimes it almost feels like 
that stuff takes over mm-hmm. and it, it just like sucks the life out of the piece and yeah. um yeah and and so yeah i think uh like by the end of it it's it's made me feel maybe a little bit more interested in uh taking some personal projects that i've wanted to do seriously like just more interested in like large scale projects where i can really kind of have some room to figure things out yeah uh it's just an experience that i haven't that is something i haven't gotten to do a whole lot of before and it was pretty awesome so um so if if marvel were to ask you to do this again what would you say oh yeah totally i mean (laughs) yeah i yeah i i have like a great time working on it um i'm really excited to be like seeing now that they're starting to come out like seeing that uh people are also really stoked and uh i'm so excited to get to share stuff that people haven't seen yet um which i know is going to be like eventually like i guess uh in the next couple of months everything will, will finally be out and um yeah there's a lot of pieces that i'm like really excited about and and at the same time though yeah it's inevitably like i've i've got like a ton of ideas since i finished working on these i'm like oh that would have been a cool way to do that character Mm -hmm. or oh that would be that would have been a neat thing so (laughs) yeah you know it's like uh it it definitely like that it, it it's just these characters go back about as far as i can remember for me like i remember my dad uh was a huge marvel collector and when i was a kid looking through his comics reading his comics copying drawings from his comics you know and uh i i think that that connection like really was was there a lot deeper than i realized when i started working on these mm-hmm. that that enthusiasm did last through to the end of it to the point where i'm just like i'm relieved and happy to have turned in my last pieces and also kind of bummed out because that was yeah, super yeah. fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> who is your favorite Marvel character just in general? There are different characters that I always really like for different reasons. Um I was always a big Spider-Man re- reader. Mm-hmm. And as far as a single character goes, Spider-Man is kind of an easy answer there to give. Uh, especially because like there's so much great Spider-Man material over right. the years, um, yeah. and then outside of Spider-Man, I was uh, also really into X-Men and uh, Excalibur, which was, huh. um, mm-hmm. yeah. So and and I think that uh, the characters of Kitty Pride and Nightcrawler were two of my favorite X-Men, and so those would be up there for me also as far as as far as favorite characters, yeah. All of the, I feel like the um, Dark Phoenix Saga era X-Men yeah. is is like good stuff for me. Like that that kind of, uh, you know, yeah, Storm and Colossus and like that, that lineup of the team, uh, I think is, is uh, probably my favorite. Yeah. That's awesome. That's cool. Um, <laughs> that's actually a good segue because um, I just read up on different i guess uh sections of cards you know there's like the the battle spectrum gem mm-hmm. set um which i didn't know what it meant and so i had to look it up and i i'm assuming it's sort of this one-on-one battle between a hero and a villain which is really awesome mm-hmm. um, and they released one card that has cyclops going against mr sinister and yes uh, yeah it's really awesome uh, because at first i was like oh it's just cyclops but then when i looked closer i didn't realize mr sinister was in the background taking off his visor because i just i at first glance i thought it was just cyclops shooting off his off his glass that's really cool i've never actually seen uh a a fight between those two characters that wasn't just like a fist fight right because that's the typical (laughs) you just have them locking arms and um and so seeing that really like gave it a a whole nother level of depth for me can you talk about that card in particular and like how you came up with the that oh, yeah. narrative concept? Yeah, I was glad that that was one of the ones that that was that is definitely one of my pieces that I'm I'm uh, happiest with in the it's, set. It's and, also uh, one of my favorites too. Yeah, it it it's so it it captures the those two characters so well. 
Yeah, the battle specters are fun to do. And at the same time, I realized like, oh, wow, this is this is extra difficult trying to make a small piece that features two characters fighting each other in a way that they're both like recognizable because you know you're mm -hmm. a lot of like you said in a fist fight like a lot of the time you're gonna have like uh why why are they both facing the viewer <laughs> you know right like, yeah yeah that's um, funny <laughs> i never thought of that <laughs> and uh and so yeah it's and and uh and then if you do figure out like uh, a couple of ways to get around that you don't want to just keep using the same trick for each piece yeah this one I, I i think this is probably my favorite of the battle spectras uh just because in a way i feel like the the posing solves that problem really well uh but also just I, uh, in in terms of story i didn't want to like i went back and forth between in the fights like are they evenly matched does the hero have the upper hand does the villain have the upper hand yeah and uh in in this particular piece like it really like mr sinister is looking totally in control of the situation and cyclops is absolutely not and yeah, that yeah. being like one of his his deepest fears is losing control of his power you know and so uh so that was something that um i think just like when i was sketching out ideas and i kind of you know, stumbled into into this direction and started working it out. I was like, oh yeah, this is the one. <laughs> this is this is the way to go with it. Uh, and then yeah, having having his face kind of like framed between those two eye beams in there, so that he is really like you said, like he's there, but almost kind of like a second read, but still like very important to the image. Um, yeah, just really really happy with how it all came together on that. Yeah, I was. Um... That, I think when I saw that, that's when I knew I was like, okay, David knows what he's <laughs> doing, you know, like, you know, because there's, there's a lot of, there's a, there's a lot of excellent artists, illustrators, painters, right? But I feel like there's not, there's a very, there's a smaller group of people who actually like understand um, the characters. And then there's even a, another level of people who actually know uh, the backstories to the characters. And I think when I saw that card, I, I knew right, like, yeah. this guy's a fan. And um, <laughs> I was just, yeah, I was, I was just completely blown away by that. I was just like, okay, this one's a good Actually, one. Actually, I, I, this is something I forgot about until you just mentioned that. Um, I, I won't be able to show <laughs> many of these, but. Um, oh, you're holding them in your hand? <laughs> oh yeah, so, so uh, these are note cards. When that was, I, I'm I'm just kind of like remembering because it was two years ago. Uh, I'm remembering some of the things that I did when I mentioned like there was that period of time when the job had started, but it hadn't quite really like started yet. Uh -huh. And once I got the character list, uh, I spent like several days, maybe like a week, just refreshing myself, like doing research and and making myself like. So this is my card for Cable, uh, which, you know, I, I'm just like going through and, and it's like Cable's a character that I know, but there are a yeah. lot of characters uh, that show up in here that I'm less familiar with. And so yeah, yeah. Like reading up on their history, really trying to kind of like understand how they fit into the whole thing. Uh, something else that I did that I just have all this stuff on my desk because I never clean or <laughs> throw things away. But um, right. I also made a list uh a, a printout of all of the characters and then um assigned each one of them a song which really was gonna be kind of like a yeah like um a song you would listen to when you were painting that character or just or well like when i was sketching if especially if i was sketching and i was feeling like it wasn't quite hitting the vibe i wanted and i'd be like all right i'm gonna go play the song and listen to the song while i sketch because the song i feel like music really it, it, it really hits straight to an emotional reaction. And that's something that I want to hmm. keep in, in each piece. I want to make sure. So that's what, like with these cards, um, I would write a bunch of notes on the back. <laughs> I don't know if I want to read these notes about Cable or not. It's, it's funny because like, they're for me. They <laughs> right, weren't right. For, for anybody else. But uh, all right, so for Cable, I wrote Man of Action, Future Soldier, Stern Leader, 
And then there's a quote here from a movie called The Way of the Gun. It's the one thing you can tell about an old man in this business, he's a survivor. And then for some reason I wrote Lee Marvin in The Big Red One. I guess that was also something that, and then uh, on the front of the card, I have a, a theme of like what I want, like whatever, whatever else, I need to be able to make sure that this theme is present when I look at the piece. And for mm. Cable, it's one hard MF. <laughs> and, <laughs> that's, uh, that's amazing. What, wait, what song, and then, did you, uh, what song did you associate? So with yeah, it's what I'm, I'm just looking. So the songs are kind of all over the place because some of them are uh, like parts of uh, scores and soundtracks to movies and some of them are mm -hmm. more like popular music. So his yeah. is a... Uh, one of the tracks from the uh, Dread soundtrack, the Carl Urban movie. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The the remake or the the, uh, the most recent yes, version. Yeah. yeah, the the yeah the reboot. Um, yes. Which I don't know when's the last time you saw that movie or if you remember the score is awesome. I mean the movie is great. I love that movie. Uh, but I think yeah, like I'm just looking at my list here. I'm like, oh yeah, good choice for cable song. When all the images are public, I gotta find a way to put my music cues up because I do feel like yeah. they actually most of them some of them I think that the the finished piece did take a slightly different direction um and it was kind of like I'm checking in with my original thought and I'm happy with going out a little different going a little different than originally but um but a lot of them I feel like it actually does still really like the music still fits uh I remember uh my song for Juggernaut was a high on fire song uh, I think it's called Science, Science of War. Rumors yeah, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look these. Uh, I'm gonna look these songs up. Um, when Rumors of War by High on Fire turned out to be an unofficial song for several characters. That was like, mm. if something isn't like, you know, if if it if it needs more of that kind of energy of like, yeah, wrecking stuff and <laughs> totally, yeah, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, then 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 I just listened to that one again, but. Uh, but yeah, it's like there's something about like uh, listening to a song. If if you're having a hard time like getting in the headspace of of the mood of a character or something, and you have a song that fits, then for me anyway, like that really kind of helps uh, get the get the uh, like get to the point of of what this piece is supposed to be. That's that's awesome. I really love I love that process of um, connecting music with sort of trying to get to you know, the, the core of a character. Um, do you know what song was um, associated with Spider-Man, just out of curiosity? Oh, I think it, I don't know why this is here, but I'm pretty sure I know without looking at it. Let me double check. <laughs> yeah, I, for some reason it ended up being Mr. Brightside by The Killers. And I think that oh, that's it just hilarious. felt to me like, a, yeah. <laughs> it felt like a good, like the, the, the kind of energy of the song felt appropriate for Spider-Man. And now that I think about it, like maybe the, uh, I put a lot of thought into these when I was doing them and then I haven't thought a lot about them since then. So yeah, I feel like I probably am happy with my, my song choices. Yeah, yeah, no. It's, I, a, it's a wide range of stuff on here. Is, is there um, one, and you don't, know how, you don't have to tell me which character it was, but is there one painting or one character that you felt like um, that you saw yourself in the most? Um, because I know a lot of artists tend to, you know, uh, infuse themselves in some of their paintings. You know, like Alex Ross always just puts himself as that character, basically, in all his characters. Mm. Um, do you, was there one in particular? Yeah, there is, there is one that is actually me. Like, I, I almost didn't use myself as a model in, in these, which is unusual. I use myself as a model all the time. Uh, although I've also gotten very good, I think, at not making it necessarily look like I'm using myself all the time. Like, um, but I definitely don't have the physique for most of these characters. Most people and don't. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so that uh, in in the particular, you know, in this particular project, turned out to not be the case. But there were. Uh, times where I would put myself in as like supporting cast. Um, the uh, the uh, Wolverine, I don't know if you saw the Wolverine I did, uh, yeah, image yeah. that was released where he's leaping in the air. So the the figures that are all like getting 
hacked up at the bottom are, you know, those are me. Uh, oh, I'll have to look, typically look at like that again. On this set. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's that's kind of how I use myself in, in most of these. But there is one character that I'm thinking of in particular where you would look at it and you'd be like, oh yeah, that's like, that's me. I didn't try to make it not look like me. Mm -hmm. I was just like, I'll, 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 I'll be on that one. And it's not a character that I even have any particular uh, connection with or anything. It was more just like when I was going through my list and choosing like who, who, what models I work with would be good for different characters. And there was one where I was just like, I feel like I could, I could do that one. I yeah, that would be a decent <laughs> casting choice for that one. So I look forward to looking for that. Um, and yeah, you'll you'll probably be able to tell when you see. It. Okay, and when I do, I'll I'll ask you, and you'll have to let me know if I get it right. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so speaking of the Wolverine one, which uh, is really it's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, I will say I think it's one of the first Wolverines I've seen that has sort of like a uh, a dad bod. Uh, physique where he he doesn't you know I mean do you know what I'm saying he doesn't have like the um just over muscular um mm -hmm. ripped physique um he actually looks like a, a a regular person I think that's something I, I I've never seen Wolverine depicted that way what led to that decision to kind of make him more grounded more realistic in the, in that sense like he this could be a real I, I, person yeah, I think that that uh, is not necessarily entirely specific to that character. I think that that's something that runs throughout the set for me, where I wanted to have a range um, of, you know, like there are some characters who are like super jacked and, and ridiculous, and there are some characters who are kind of like scrawny or normal looking. Yeah. Uh, normal isn't just like, um, you know, like uh, not especially like athletic or muscular looking, and uh, and a lot of the characters I feel are are very fit, but they're not necessarily going to be like you know uh, Conan or something. Right. And so um, between that and then also every I feel like every character I was trying to decide like where on the the spectrum does their costume fit between uh, body paint and, and like, like, uh, like functional armor or, or like real clothing, you mm -hmm. know? And, and a lot of it uh, ended up like that Wolverine is, is probably leaning more towards real clothing. Like you can see the, uh, you know, yeah. some definition of muscles, but it's definitely not like that, that like body paint look that, I think that um, asking myself, like, how do I want to, like, what do I think would look cool? What have I not seen that I think would be a cool thing to see? Or maybe not that I haven't seen, because I mean, Alex Ross was doing that like way back with, uh, I remember probably the first time I ever saw his work was Marvel's uh, mm -hmm. yeah. the miniseries. And I, I remember thinking like, that's so cool. Like, they're wearing clothes, <laughs> you know, like yeah, yeah, like you, you can, can see, see the, the and fabric and exactly, yeah. I think that's also um, one of the the uh, stylistic choices that defines your work is that it, you know, it's just not like you said, body paint. Um, even on Venom, it looks mm -hmm. like you know he's wearing something, um, and I, I think mm -hmm. that's something that's something I appreciate um, in in your work, and that kind of makes it stand out. This is how I feel like I would do it. And so I'm gonna do some and turn them in and see what they say. And, and everybody was into it. So yeah. yeah, so that was just, that was the direction that it ended up going. There are characters that I was like, I have to figure out how to do that kind of like over the top physique. Cause that's something that I sure, yeah. really never do. And, and so it wasn't like compromising uh, exactly. It was, it was more just kind of like, I'm going to have to figure that one out. And, but again, like, like if you want that huge dude to look huge, you can't have everybody else be huge too. It's like, <laughs> you know, there's, yeah. uh, there's contrast between the different body types and that kind of thing. And, uh, yeah, ultimately, um, I'm happy with the range. Uh, I'm, 
fairly certain that's going to be an area where there's differing opinions. If, if I can do something that I think looks cool and exciting, everybody's not going to like it, but there are going to be people who, who share a similar aesthetic to me and they're going to be really into it. And so that's, that's usually what I go for. Um, out of the characters that have been revealed, is there one that you felt was the most challenging just in terms of like either nailing the, the theme or the pose, I, I guess, mm. either the composition or one that you had to do a little more research on? Because like you said, there's no way to know every Marvel character ever. Um, yeah, so there's, there's of the ones that have been shown so far, mm. there were challenges for different reasons. Uh, Spider-Man and Wolverine were tough just because those are like kind of high pressure situations, you know, yeah. and, and they've been done so much and right. so well by artists for, you know, many decades. Uh, yeah, I guess of, of the other ones shown, um, Black Cat was one that I think was more of a technical challenge just because it's that really like uh, kind of extreme perspective. She's, she's oh, hanging she's down. Oh, she's coming down with ceiling. the lasers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and um, so there were a couple of things about like, it's an unusual angle to see a face from. Yeah. And... <laughs> the the perspective of the environment and then uh actually like placing the laser beams turned out to be something that's like that's the kind of thing that always seems like just whatever just draw some lines it's just then, lines right yeah yeah but but it's like you you're for me anyway like i started putting those lines down and, and you run into tangents all over the place and right so perspective you're, you're constantly and, yeah. like this one has to be exactly here <laughs> this one has to be oh no 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 i gotta move that first one you know and uh so yeah, um, things like that would, would come up, but you know, that also is something that keeps it like, uh, those, those pieces stick out in my mind more, I guess, because they were more of a challenge, but also because it's like, they're distinctly different from most of the others, you know? And there are some pieces that, like, I love uh, how Ultron came out, um, mm. but it's like, there's, you know, the, the Ultron piece is a little more straightforward and basic. It's like he's he's like uh the t100 at the end of terminator with the fire like yeah yeah washing over him um just just look super scary and intimidating right right know? yeah it's but, like the stance <laughs> the typical villain stance yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah um so yeah uh i think that there are there are some that that i can't show you yet that yeah. uh get into like more more storytelling or some that are like more complicated than they need to be but i just got real into you know like there's there's one in my mind in particular that is just like did not need to go as far as i did with this one but huh. it was going to make a cool painting and you know in the end like that's what is worth it is like uh if you got it if you got your best idea do your best idea yeah so. yeah was was there one painting or character that you figured out like in just in one go that you didn't have to redo any poses. You didn't get any um, feedback. It was just like, yeah, uh, actually, a lot of them. And when when you say one go, like as far as feedback goes, most of them, which really surprised me uh, in a very like happy surprise kind of way. But um, yeah, that was going back to like I didn't know what the working relationship was going to be like, and it turned out to be very very smooth and. There were definitely times where I got notes, you know, but but a lot of stuff was just like, you know, you'd send in the sketch and 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 they'd be like, looks great, can't wait to see the finish, you know. And so, but there were there were definitely some characters like even before I got to the point of sending a sketch in, just in my notebook, where it'd just be kind of like, yeah, I I feel like I've got the picture in my head. I I do feel like Daredevil is pretty straight up just like what I had in mind. Iron Man, I feel like that, but I think it it I also feel like that one was one where I I had to kind of like draw it a few times before it made sense. But uh, but yeah, um, definitely like the concept was pretty clear. Yeah in my in my head and then i just had to kind of like find the shapes on right. paper i noticed that you have certain artwork hanging behind you um oh yeah <laughs> do you want to just kind of give me a quick um intro to what it is or who or who it is and i see there's like a t-rex or something yeah uh that's a sculpture by vince villafranca 
what else? There's a Jeffrey Allen Love just to the to the side of that one. I don't know. How oh, it's a hook. Okay, I thought it was an elephant. It's it's like a, a head with a helmet. Oh, oh no, yeah, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I'm thinking because there is an elephant thing hanging up in this room, but it's in a different wall. What else is up here? That's a Darren Bader. Uh, School of Piranhas from Magic the Gathering, I think. Uh, oh, amazing. Ooh, I'm not going to be able to remember which set it was from, but somewhere around like 98, 2000, something like that. There's a prelim John Berkey piece from some book cover that for a book I've never read, but uh, <laughs> I uh, found it for sale at a show once and just thought it was super cool. And I, I think it was like one of the first pieces of art that I ever bought. I was probably like in or just out of high school and I was like oh wow. I actually can afford this I'm gonna buy it You're like, yep, <laughs> you know I'm gonna get it that one over there is one of mine it's not normal that I hang my own work up um that one was one that my wife really liked and she was frustrated that I gave it to my gallery and then it <laughs> ended up uh it ended up not selling uh which seemed like I think there were a couple of times where it almost sold and then it didn't and then at a certain point I was getting some work back and she's like can we get that one back I was like okay so oh, that was meant so to be came, then it came back home and then uh just to the left is uh some thumbnail sketches from Frazetta which oh that's cool yeah uh that was something I got at San Diego Comic-Con maybe like five years ago um there was a auction house that had just a whole bunch of stuff I think basically like from the estate and um oh wow and yeah again it was something where I was just like I can't afford to ever buy a Frazetta piece but I can kind of afford this and so I'm gonna buy yep, it yep. you know always interesting to see what people have hanging up in their homes Absolutely. I was looking at yours is, is it looks like a set of photos hanging behind you there yeah yeah these are I think these are just the uh, black and white photos I always try to put like at least one uh comic book here in the background um, nice that's just a sketch so i figured um since i'm inter uh, talking to an artist i must well have a artist sketch here um, oh, okay is, is there anything um that you have coming up that you want to say or uh where people can reach you or stay in touch um, with you yeah uh instagram is probably the best place to follow me but instagram at dv palumbo D is in David, V is in Vincent, P A L U M B O, and uh, and my website is dvpalumbo.com. If anybody is interested in originals of these, I'm going to be uh, making those available through my website. Uh, there will be a link in my Instagram bio page, and it'll be it'll be on my site, and uh, people can email me if they want to get uh, heads up when new stuff is going to be going up on the site. So, mm, that's cool yeah that's awesome. yeah uh yeah so those i'm gonna be making them available basically like as they're publicly released gotcha um i'm not sure what the release schedule is like because i'm just kind of following upper deck's lead on that and yeah. so uh between now and september when the full set comes out i i believe there will be like some more pieces spoiled and then you know the whole set will be out in september and so yeah at that point like I'll be periodically putting putting new stuff up uh, available on there. Awesome. So yeah, yeah, that sounds great. Um, well, I look forward to uh, getting some of those cards and uh, congratulations again. Um, super excited, uh, and thank you for being here and taking the time out of your day. Yeah, thanks so much. It was great talking with you.